1943. We also welcome our brothers and sisters who are watching us through this broadcast. We pray that this project that is going to be released today is going to inspire you, it's going to motivate you to make a decision to serve the Lord Jesus Christ with your whole heart. Acts of the Apostle chapter 9 from verse 36 to 43. If you may say Amen. Amen. Shall we go read? Now. 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 I told her there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Douglas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died when they had approached her, they laid her in the upper room. And since Nina was near Joppa, and when the disciple heard that Peter was dead, they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter arose and went there. When they had come, they brought him to the upper room, and all the people stood by him weeping, sowing the tongues and garments which God was had made righteous with them. But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed and turned into the body and said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes and when she saw Peter, she saw. Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, he presented her alive and he called none from Joppa and made believe for the Lord. So it was that he stayed many days in Joppa with Simon and Tamar. Let's also take our Bible, go to the first, uh, first Samuel chapter 12. We're just going to read one verse, which is verse 24. First Samuel chapter 12, verse 24. Are we all there? Amen. Yeah. Shall we all read? Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart, for consider what great things he has done for you. Shall we all bow our head and pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your word. Because your word, Father, never returned void. Father, we pray that this word will be released to your people, Father God. They will be inspired and motivated, O oh Lord, to serve you faithfully, Father God. We will walk in the fear of the Lord, Father God. As we walk in the fear of the Lord, Father, so shall we overcome every limitation and darkness, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that, Father, this word will be and turn around to someone tonight, today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. To be able to pronounce all the praise, Father God, and all the glory for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. When the pastor spoke to me a couple of days ago, he told me, he said, I want you to share the word of God with the people of God. And then I thought to myself, I was pastor, I've got so many subjects that I want to talk to the people of God today, and he said, only focus on one. This subject is something that I've lived there, I've seen the goodness of God, especially in my family as well. Everyone will go with the Lord, but only people I've seen, because the Bible says, you will know them by their fruits. Amen. So I want to talk to you today about motivating to serve. But before we uh, go to the subject today, I'd like to remind you here, in 1 Samuel chapter 12, even chapter 11, there are series of stuff that happen. In chapter 11 here, we can see how God divinely connected so to meet Samuel and how God was displeased with the children of Israel when they asked, can we have a king? 
But when Samuel did it with the Lord, the Lord told Samuel, He said that, Don't worry, they have not rejected me, but they rejected, they have not rejected you, but they rejected me. So in verse 12, the Samuel is addressing the children of Israel, he's telling them, All these days when he was called in the office, the way that he walked with the Lord, the way that he cared for them, and he's reminding them, he's telling them, Fear the Lord, serve him, and walk faithfully before him. And this is the same message that the Lord has come today to tell us. Amen. Fear the Lord, serve him, and walk faithfully with him. So before we go deeper, I want to give you a uh, give you a few uh, definition. I want to I want to start defining a few stuff before we proceed further. I want to define motivation. Motivation is defined as that which moves one towards an action, that which changes, provokes, or impels our very being. It is also the driving force behind human actions. It is the process that initiates, guides, and maintains goal oriented behavior. This definition here is given in terms of a worldly view. But as believers, as the followers, the call of the Lord Jesus Christ, our motivation should be different from that of people that belong to the world. The motivation of believers should be different from that which of unbelievers. Our sense of motivation should come from the word of God, not from the things of God or the things of the world. Mm. We all know the apostle, the apostle John in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16 to 17, is reminding us, he's telling us that do not love the world and the things that lost the world. But for God, because the things that is the world, those things are temporal. But the things that are of God, those things are eternal. Mm -hmm. And also in those terms of saying that we have so many examples of people that God has used in the past. But the question to ask today is to find out what motivated those people to serve the Lord. And then when we discover that, it should push us also to do the same. Because there were human beings like us as well. So we shouldn't have any excuse when it comes to serving the Lord. So the Bible has a lot to tell us about motivation. And this can be found in various places. They tell us here the Bible because we live in a world where people are thinking to say that oh these things are going to Bible. But these things were written long time ago. Because the Bible also says that nothing is new under the sun. So the examples of people or the Bible, they had so many, they talked about motivation, they talked about the commitment, the way they work with the Lord. But the first one, David spoke of his motivation in the books of Psalms. If you can take a Bible turns to the book of Psalms chapter 40. Psalm chapter 40. Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. Are we all there? Amen. Yeah. Psalm chapter 40, verse 8, it reads, I desire to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. So the question is today, because we're talking about motivation, how many of us in the house of God deny themselves in doing the will of God? Or are we just coming because they're telling us to do things? Or is it because of the love, the motivation, the passion we have for God? And then he goes further again, he said, still David, he's talking in Psalm 73, verse 25. Psalm 73, verse 25. 
Psalm 73, verse 25. Yet yeah, Psalm 73, verse 25, it reads, Who are thy in heaven but you, and there is none upon earth that I desire beside you. Amen. My Amen. prayer today is that we will desire to serve the Lord. Amen. We will desire to see the word of God. Amen. In everything we do, God will take the believers. Amen. We've seen these two examples in the Bible of David, who he known at the age of 15, was anointed to be king, but he spent the next 15 years running after his life. But we know during those times that David was motivated to serve God. Even when he ascended to the throne, the throne his motivation or his inspiration was to serve God. And if we are children of God, we can follow this example of David. Despite the challenges, despite the troubles that are coming our way, we will be able to overcome David in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we've seen David in Psalm 40, verse 8, and Psalm 73, verse 25. There is another person I want to show you today in the Bible. The Apostle Paul spoke, spoke of what motivated him to endure the suffering experience. He wasn't about money, no fame, but he was for living for Christ that superseded everything. So basically, the Apostle Paul was motivated to serve God. He put everything behind him to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we know? This can be found in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. 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 Are we all there? Amen. It reads, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is again. How many of us in the house of God today will make this statement? How many of us, if we do the same evaluation, if we examine ourselves, examine the way we walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, how many of us here today? We made this decision for saying that for to me to live is Christ and to die is again. And in another example, we know of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ was concerned with pleasing his Father, and so should we be motivated by that same concern. He always did the Father's will, motivated by pleasing him through obedience. Here's another thing. Serving the Lord will cost you something. Mm. If serving the Lord doesn't cost you anything, then you're wasting your time. Mm. We believers, we have to serve the Lord with everything that we have. Serving the Lord with our talent. Serving the Lord with our time. Serving the Lord with our strength. As we've seen here, and also we need to be obedient. Mm. We can wait. Previously, David is saying that your laws are within my heart. So when the laws of the Lord are within your heart, that will push you to walk in obedience. That will push you, will push you to obey everything that the word of God is saying. Because God primarily speaks to us through his word. So then if his word is not in us, then we are nothing. How can you influence, how can people see us as the followers of Lord Jesus Christ when we have not the word of God inside of us? As we see that statement, 
that when Jesus got to be, they extended all the way to the cross where he humbled himself and became obedient and to death. The Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that he was God, he served the Father with all his heart. We pray this morning that God help us to fulfill the purpose of your life, of the purpose that you have for us in our lives. We have to seek to, to get this example of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that he went to start, he's God. He went to this planet Earth. He suffered. But towards the end, he was still obedient unto death. He obeyed the Father. Our motivation should be the same as his. The obedience by which we prove we are truly his. When we obey God, when we obey the, 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 the command of the Lord Jesus first, that truly shows that we belong to God. Mm. And then you will be able to seek the concerns of people. Mm. You will be able to seek people to validate you. Why? Because the glory of the Lord will be reflected in you and that will make people to come close to you. Amen. And we know that. Let's take our Bible to John chapter 4, verse 34. John chapter 4, verse 34. John chapter 4, verse 34. Are we all there? Amen. You read it. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. May I just paraphrase because when I was reading for it yesterday, I was to paraphrase and he says, My motivation is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. And also we can find this one in Hebrews 10, chapter 4, where it reads, Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the Lord, it is written of me, to do your way, O God. As believers, we are called to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and follow him. The cross was an instrument of death. Amen. And Jesus' message to us is that only those who die to self we truly follow him. Amen. We do that by doing nothing out of vanity or conceit, but instead considering others than ourselves. Amen. How many of us here today consider the benefit from the way things of others rather than putting yourself first? And how many of us we truly deny themselves and take up the cross and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. The journey has never been easy, but the more we get close to God, the more we seek to do His will, then He changes us, He transforms us, He gives us the Holy Spirit which produces strength to be able to endure the challenges of life. Amen. 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 The word believing in is motivated by all about me syndrome, which is identified by self determination, self obsession, and self worship. Self determination is needed in life to achieve our goals and to become the people that God wants us to be. Because the way we are here, my brothers and sisters, God wants us to achieve the purpose He has in our lives. And when we fall short of that purpose, it doesn't please God. So your self determination should be based in the word of God, should be based in, in the line with His commandment, should be based in obedience to His word and in obedience to the people He's put before you. And he goes further, the Bible does 
doesn't teach us to be centered on ourselves. In fact, it teaches us the opposite. As the Apostle Paul is talking to the Philippians, it's saying, put the needs of others before you. We shouldn't be selfish as believers. We should seek the well-being of other people close to us. So now we define motivation. I want to define to you what service means. Because our title today is motivated to serve. A service is something that you provide or perform for another person. Also, a service is any activity or benefit that one party can offer to another, which is essentially intangible and does not result in the ownership of anything, is production made or may not tied to a physical product. We have so many people of service around us. When you go to the bank, they provide you a service. When you go to the restaurant, they provide you a service. Every believer is called to a life of service. Serving the Lord and serving others in bringing peace before the pattern set by the Lord Jesus Christ. What's the pattern set by the Lord Jesus Christ? This can be found in Matthew 20, verse 28. And then you read, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, mm. but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Mm. The Lord Jesus Christ is the supreme example of service as we've seen. He was as he came, although that he was God, he was powerful, omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. He came to serve the humanity. He did not come to be served, but he came to serve other people. We can also find that example in John chapter 13, where he washed the feet of his disciples. So we know that we should be serving others, and we should strive to do good in our community. We should strive to help the poor. We should strive to help those who are needy. We need to get out of the walls of the building, go into the community, and touch hurting, needy, and poor people. There are so many people out there that need the word of God. They need the Lord Jesus Christ, but we cannot always give them the word of God with our actions. So we should combine the word and our actions. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not really necessary for us as believers to use the word of God all the time. And we see people begging bread in the street. We see people, they cry and they haven't go anywhere to sleep. If we don't do that by action, we need that. We don't, we don't do ourselves any favor. So, the issue is not whether our acts of service are known, but the motivation is for doing them. The question is today, my brothers and sisters, whose prayers do you desire? In other terms, what's your motivation in your Christian journey? Where do you see yourself? Because when we are motivated to serve the Lord, we shouldn't be the same. There should be a change in us. We cannot keep on doing the same thing that we kept on doing two years ago. We need to show progress. People need to see and need to identify us that these are the sons of the living God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And this leads us to the next stage. There are many examples of people who will commit 
preached in the Bible was John the Lord Jesus Christ for you. But today, I want to bring to your memories the first scripture that we read today from Acts chapter 9 from verse 26. What the Bible is talking to us about Tabitha, Dorcas. How she how she was motivated to serve the community mm. by the word of God. Amen. So from that scripture that we read from Acts chapter 9, from verse 36 to 43, we can come up with four or three different elements that our prayer that was released today, you will hold on to them. Amen. And you want them in your heart. Amen. So the first one, as you can see from the, the scripture that we read from Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 6, that Tabitha served through discipleship. So they served through discipleship. As I said earlier on, there's no need for us only to know the word of God, but the word of God should be in line, should be combined with our actions. So serving through discipleship here, we can see from Acts chapter 9, verse 36, is that Tabitha was a female disciple. I just want to say something because of the body of Christ today. We have so many teachings. We have so many pastors, apostles, and we see the people with the word of God. And we have this fear that only many can serve the Lord. But that's wrong from us in telling us today that Tabitha was a thief of disciple. Amen. Amen. She knew the word of God. Amen. She didn't keep the word of God by herself, but the word of God produced results. So what she did in the community. Amen. Amen. We know that Tabitha was a deeper disciple. We can find her from Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Acts chapter 9, from verse 6. I'm going to read it quickly. Acts 9, Acts 9. Verse 26, read. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple. Notice that the Bible is calling them a certain disciple Amen. named Tabitha, mm. which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which did. Because the first thing we're realizing is she was a female disciple. The Lord is calling all our mothers in the house today. He's telling them that we have to be disciples. We shouldn't follow what has been said out there that they cannot take a place in the body of Christ. So we know that Tabitha was a female disciple. And also we find as well from the verse 26 is that Tabitha was a Christian woman. Full of good works mm. in the community. Amen. She got the word of God, and the word of God she used it in a way of helping the community. And we know from the book of Acts, if we start our commencing from chapter 7, we can see that. Disciples, there are so many people, so many people around them, and they decided to appoint seven people. So those seven people were about to go out there and to help those where they need. And the second one, point, time to serve for serving good. Or service for serving good. From verse 
the city saying that Tabit is the voluntary work with their hands in community. How many of us here today, if they call us to do work in the community, do you want to say something in return? Or we do it because we have the heart of God. Mm. We've seen in the book of verse 26 that Tabitha, in GD, voluntary work with their hands in the community. She fed the women. She fed those who in need. She helped those who were displayed, who were rejected by the community. She took them. And secondly, Tabitha donated resources to the poor and needy in the community. This leads us to the previous point that we had before. We said, we shouldn't be self-centered. We shouldn't be focusing on ourselves. We should go out there and help those who are in need. Amen. Because when you do one act of good to someone, they will see, maybe not now, but there is a day that the Spirit of the Lord will reveal them. The Spirit of the, the Lord will minister to them to say that, why is this supposed to be good to me? So that's why we should follow as believers in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. We have to donate our resources. And this comes up not only the not uh, giving resources outside, we have to donate our resources in the house of God. You may not have enough, but what you feel that God is asking us today mm. is our time. Amen. It's our commitment. Amen. Is a sacrifice Amen. for his word to reach those who are lost. So it's a little donated resources to the poor and needy in the community. We should strive to do the same thing. Give to those who lack. Mm. Feed those who are in hungry. Help those who are struggling to overcome the challenges in life. Because that's what we've been called to do. Because this life here we live in, many people are struggling. Many people are going through tough time. Yes, the Lord is there to help them. We may be saying, okay, I'm going to pray for you. And you need to seek God to help you go through this time. But what are we doing? Because God is not going to come down there. Of course, God is sovereign. He is able, as we know, the Bible to do exceedingly, abundantly beyond that we can pass. We will see in the Bible that God has helped and sent people to help the sin, to help his brother. But this is what God is asking us today. We need to get out there. We need to help those who are struggling. Maybe your words only can motivate someone, can encourage them. And also as believers, we have to know the words that's coming out of our mouths. Because our word should be the word that motivates others. Amen. Our word should be the word that brings others from the ground. Amen. You know, my brothers and sisters, that person you are referring to as sister praying to God, maybe the leader needs to take oh, 20 minutes to sit down with him. So that whatever you're going to say to the person, you never know they be coming from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the next one we know from verse 39 of Acts chapter 9. Tabitha ministered to the widows. Tabitha ministered to the widows. Amen. Again, this is a question I'm asking us today. Who do you minister, my brothers and sisters, when you are in the workplace? It doesn't necessarily mean that people have to know that we are believers. And sometimes we start up a conversation and then, as the Spirit of the Lord 
causes heaviness, you may see one thing that can minister that person. And the next one, Tabitha face, face sickness and death. As we read from verse 37, but it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed, they washed her, they laid her in the upper room. And the source of good works and motivation to serve the world made her to finish the first seat, and the last seat that's left unto them. And the people around her to be the people's ministry, they have no hope. And then the question again, as the Apostle Paul is saying, for to me to live is Christ, mm. and to die is again. Amen. Are you willing to face sickness and death with it? the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you willing to face sickness and death to help the community, to help the people that have been pronounced to you? Has the same example of the data here. And the third and the last element is that uh, there's a reward in our service when we serve God. Amen. There's a reward in our brothers and sisters. Amen. I heard someone say that serving the Lord be paid. Mm. But serving the Lord is paid by right now. Amen. You may not see. I stand to ground. Believe that God has the best interest. Believe that the Lord will see you through. Amen. There is a reward when you serve the Lord. God ah. will have the faith to pray for you. Mm. You have seen it from today that when she first sickness, she died. The community prayed for her. Mm. And God. Saint Peter, who was able to be in that region. Mm. My question is today, my brothers and sisters, how mm. is your relationship with the people you have in the house of God? Mm. Because when you fall down today, you need someone to be saved for you. Amen. When you're going through challenges, you need someone to pray for you. Amen. That's what the people did. But they go back to the community. Mm. But that's the word. Help those who need. Mm. When she first sees this in death, she will have the faith to pray for her. And we know God, the next one, God will work many of us through and for you. When we serve the Lord, God will work miracles for you and for you. That's the miracle that we saw in the Lord today in Acts chapter 9. That when she first seen that she first did, there was a miracle God worked for her. And I believe in that time that when that miracle was done, we don't know. Many people converted that day. We don't know how many numbers of people converted, but we trust the Lord by His word that many people converted that day. Many people changed the way of serving the Lord. Many people decided to say, We follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And the next one, God will save the world and promote the fascism. Through your testimony. Amen. The testimony of Sabbath and A good book led us to this sickness mm. and death. And when the apostle of God, the apostle Peter, raised her up, that's the testimony. Amen. That's the thing that drew people that day, mm. that changed people. And the Lord is calling us to 
pray. What are you doing in the of Christ to those who are out there once again? The most, the most who know the word of God. Yes, the Bible declares, the Bible says that a fool has said that there is no God. Yes, through the principle of the word of God. But what are we doing? What are the efforts are we doing to get those people in to know God? To spare them to hear the God of divinity. God would say the Lord to promote evangelism for your testimony. And the next one, the ultimate example of service is from the Master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why was the Lord Jesus Christ put up his mission on this planet Earth? Let's take our Bible in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4.